so you are looking into self-publishing a book in 2024, and I'm so excited that you are watching this video. My name is Catherine D. Graham. I'm a USA Today bestselling dark fantasy author, and today I'm going to give you five steps that you should consider following when you are first starting out trying to launch a book as a self-published or indie author coming in 2024. This process can change from year to year. I feel I'm filming this as of January 27th, 2024. But if you're watching this way ahead in the future, hello, future people, then you might want to do a little research, make sure this is still relevant to you in 2025 or 2026 or 2035 or whenever you come across the video, right? So with that being said, let's dive right in. I do want to tell you that there are going to be a couple links that I talk about today that are affiliate links in the description box, but all the other ones that I don't say anything about are not affiliate links. I am not receiving anything in exchange for recommending you to them. And my goal today is to help you guys launch your book as successfully as you can, because you only get one debut novel. And that's the most important thing. You will never have the easy accessibility. And I know right now it doesn't feel easy and it's not an easy feet to be sure, but it will never be so easy to market as you have tagging that my debut novel on there. So let's get the most out of it as possible. So you're not digging yourself out later. All right. So to start us off, first things first, you need to finish your book. And maybe you're like, well, no, duh. But here's what happens. There are so many cool tools and the ability to put up pre-orders on systems like Amazon Kindle and Barnes and Noble Press and Draft to Digital, which you may have seen on my channel. And you might be tempted to run and put a pre-order up and you don't have a finished book yet. Stop, stop. Don't make this mistake. I made this mistake. So many other authors made this mistake. You can go watch the indie author live panels and you can see other people who've made this mistake. Don't start yourself off owing something. If you have a finished book, then everything else will flow so much smoother and you can be working on book two during all of these steps for book one, which really is going to help and matter. If you stay tuned to the end, you'll see why. So first things first, finish the first draft. And when I say finish your book, it does not mean that it has to be beautiful right this second, edited right this second for you to start marketing and building a platform, but it has to at least be finished so that you can start it off on, on this process and then move on to book two, if you're going to have one. Step number two, start building up platform. So what is a platform, you may ask? Well, a platform is a base of fellow readers who will hopefully want to buy and read your books and review your books and recommend your books to all their bookish friends. Um, and you can't sell books to no one. Uh, one of the things that I learned many years ago when I published my first novel that was a flop was that you can stick your book up on retailers, but if you don't tell anybody it's there, nobody's going to buy it except for your family and close friends. And then if you write dark fantasy like me, some of them might be creeped out by your dark fantasy and then they might not buy other books. Um, <laughs> that's always been a big fear of mine. So don't rely on just friends and family to help you make your big break. It's nice to have their support. And of course, we welcome them shouting you from the rooftops. But it helps to go into this knowing you have readers, real people outside of your circle who want to buy your book and you can do that before your book is even out and I'm going to talk about how you do that. First things first, you need to decide who your target audience is. I know when I started my author journey, this was one of the most difficult questions that I answered beside which subgenre of the 200 bisac categories you had to choose from for putting your book up on retailers that I had to decide was who exactly is my target reader? How old are they? What gender are they? Do they assign themselves to a gender? Where are they in the world? Because there's international marketing and there's US marketing. And do I want Amazon readers? Do I want wide readers who are on Barnes and Noble or international retailers? It all was very overwhelming. So I want to simplify this for you as much as I can on today's screen. I know that Goodreads gets a lot of up and down opinions. Some people love it. Some people hate it. But if you go to Goodreads and you type in dark epic fantasy books 
with no romance. And you search. Well, usually you would get a response. So let's just take it out to dark fantasy books. <laughs> oh, it's because I'm searching under the books tab. That would be why. All right, dark fantasy books. As you can see, it gives me this, but there's a Listopia option on here. And you can search under Listopia. And it will give you lists of all these different authors who write in your genre. Here we go. As of lists that people have made. So dark epic fantasy, dark heroic fantasy, the reader's choice 100, adult fantasy for beginners. I can scroll down through the list. And when I find one that matches my target demographic, I will just say, hmm, adult sci-fi and fantasy. Okay. And you can put the gear there too, 2024. And you click there. You can start scrolling through who other authors are that your ideal readers might be reading. Because I chances are you're going to know what you're writing before you know who your comp authors are, other authors like you. So you start scrolling through here. Start taking a look at some of these books. If you have not read them, it never hurts to read some of them. If you don't have time to read some of them because you want to get your book out, that's fine. Uh, but in that case, at least pull it up, read the blurb, get a feel for that. And then take a look at who's reviewing it. What demographics are you seeing about those people? What other books do they like? If I go to the amazing Jay Kristoff's Empire of the Vampire book, for example, and I scroll down to his reviews, of which he has thousands. Congratulations, Jay. <laughs> if you're watching this, you could see, oh, hey, I have friends on here who read Jay's books. I could see what other books they like. And I'm slowly widening my circle, getting a feel for what they're reading, what they like. I can then take that information and use that <clears throat> to go back to my own social medias and find out where those authors are hanging out because those authors have already found out where their readers are and they're hanging out there. So if I know Jay Kristoff is very active on Instagram and my readers are Jay Kristoff readers, then where am I going as an indie author? I'm going to start an Instagram account. And I actually did start an Instagram account, but not because of Jay Kristoff. <laughs> I started an Instagram account because that's where a lot of the epic fantasy readers were. And a lot of the epic fantasy writers were there and I was very nervous about it. I didn't have a personal Instagram and I got on and I followed the comp authors in my group, especially indie authors. And I just started seeing what kind of content they put up. Did they post about their cats, food, travel, what they liked, video games? And that gave me an idea of who my target audience was, where I could find them. And that gave me the ability to make an informed decision about social media and website partners and preferences. Which socials did I want to spend my very limited amount of time on? And did I want an author website? If I wanted an author website, did I want a site um, that hmm, was email only, I guess? <laughs> or did I want a site that was more reader focused and there was blog content and character art and arts and uh, sneak peeks and like a Patreon style setup, if you will. So that is all decisions that I had to make starting out. The next thing you can do once you find your comp authors and you find indie authors is meet your peers. Yay for meeting peers. <laughs> you get to meet other indie authors who write like you. And that means you get to introduce yourself. And you're not going to just randomly drop in their inbox and go, hey, I'm a new author. Promote my book because that's a little creepy because I have no idea who you are. Um, and you might feel the same if some random drop stranger dropped in your inbox and said, hey, I write a book like blah, blah, blah. Come buy it. They might be creeped out by that. Uh, some authors welcome it. And thankfully, there were a few that put up with my lack of social graces when it came to social media starting out. But don't be like me when I started out. Uh, you know more than me now. Congratulations. So um, instead, engage with them. Check out their books. Take the time to learn a bit, a little bit about what they write. 
interact with their social media, decide whether your audiences are actually a good fit for each other, and then reach out, introduce yourself, talk about their book and what you liked about their book, and then bring up your debut novel and it will evolve. This is a very open, honest, encouraging community. You can network with this community, but you have to just be real and authentic and turn off the sales switch when you're reaching out to fellow authors. Number three, we're going to talk about editing and designing your book. So your book's written, right? You never started steps one and two without actually writing your book. So getting into uh, step three, the first thing and one of the most important things that you can do for your book is get it edited. Now, whether that's going to take the form of getting it edited on a self-editing software like you see here, um, I always self-edit my books before I send it to human readers. Um, and I use a system called Autocrit. There's a whole video about it up on my channel where I go through and walk through exactly how I use this to edit. So I will put that link in the description box for you guys. I work on their human editing team for developmental edits, but I'm not being sponsored to do this video. I don't get anything back uh, by recommending them to you. I've been a member with them way longer than I've been on their editing team and purchased a lifetime membership a long time ago. Uh, you can use self-editing tools like this, but keep in mind that a self-editing tool is never really going to be an effective replacement for a human editor. It can slow down what kind of edits you're going to need. So I don't need line edits or copy edits anymore. I just need proofreads. But until you develop that skill and can self-edit to that level, you still need human editors and it never hurts to have a final human touch. Uh, so when you are finished self-editing, head on over to Upwork or something like Fiverr where you can hire an editor like me. I take edits during the off season, as you can see here, busy seasons. I'm booked. I can't really do anything for you, but research an editor. I have a video on how to vet editors through platforms like Fiverr on my channel as well. So go watch the indie author behind the scenes playlist if you would like more on that um, and find one that's a good fit for you. Order a sample before you invest in a full um, edit from them and basically line up your edits. The official levels of editing are developmental editing, which checks for plot, pacing, character development, world building. And then there are technical edits. That would normally be line editing for readability and flow and to improve your overall prose. Then your copy editing, that's gonna be bringing your book up to your manual of style standards, whether that's Chicago manual style, Oxford, Cambridge, the list is very long. <laughs> so find one that works with your manual of style. And then you're going to have copy editing. Well, we just said copy editing, but then you have your proofreader to catch the errors that were missed in line and copy editing. Then you would send your book off. And that's what we're going to talk about next. You're going to talk about, or we're going to talk about the design. Then you're going to send your book off to get it designed. You need a cover that is not just beautiful, but that matches a cover within your genre and that will sell. And this is one of the hardest parts of the entire editing, formatting, getting your book ready to sell uh, experience that I've had because I've had a lot of eh, up and down where I really love to cover. And I'm going to share an example here very briefly. I loved the Violet Twisted Fates cover. It's gorgeous. It's fantastic. Jess did an amazing job. This was my debut novel and it immediately caught people's attention and it sold copies. But this cover gave people young adult vibes and I don't write young adult books. I write new adult and up. So when people picked it up thinking it was young adult and they got into it, they were sorely disappointed when it was not young adult. And so I had to go get it redone into a, another beautiful but completely different style cover to convey the age group that it was meant to be for. You also have different feels. There's a very different feel between a book that looks like this and a book that looks like this. Splitting Dawn being the one that was in the Realm of Darkness box set, the one that made me a USA Today bestseller. A reader should be able to pick this up and have an idea for the tone and the feel of the book. Well, I'm, an, I'm a writer. I'm not an artist. Some of us are blessed to do both and I'm not. I didn't know where to start, where to turn for that. 
So companies like MIBL Art or Mibble Art, this is one of the ones that I do have an affiliate link for because they have done so many of my covers and have done a great job on all of them. Them and their sister companies, GetCovers.com and GetPremades.com, have done a superb job for me. They don't charge you till you actually like your cover at the end, which is a huge plus. 10 out of 10 recommend this experience with them. They will work with you to revise so you don't have to feel guilty about what you do with your cover. And they also offer interior formatting. Now you can find interior formatting or what we call interior design to separate out chapters and get the layout right and everything on Fiverr too. But Mobile Arts is very affordable um, and very reliable. It is not going to be a tomorrow turnaround. All of these phases take time. A line edit's going to take you a good four to six weeks if you have an epic fantasy. Copy edit's going to be another. And then your proofread's going to be another month. And then your design right here for this cover is going to be a few weeks. And then the interior design to bring it all together is going to be another few weeks. And that whole time, you can be building your platform. You can be working on setting readers up to whom you will sell this book once it launches. So that's really important that you're not wasting time in these phases. You're writing book two. You're prepping this book to sell. It all works together. Be writing. It turns into a cycle. A book in drafting. A book in editing. A book in designing. A book released. And it just goes round and round and round. If this is going to be something you pursue as an indie author business. Um, and if you'd like to see more about Mibble Art or... Uh, some of these other tools, I do have a completely separate video showing off these tools on my site that you can see on my playlist as well. Um, all right, so you're going to edit your book, you're going to get it designed, and then you're going to begin the launch process. The launch process can be daunting. It helps to have help the first time. And once you have your feet under you, you can sort of take this and do it yourself. I way overspent my first book. I think I spent close to $4,000 when all was said and done between the custom cover for the Vow That Twisted Fate, getting out ARC boxes to mail out to international ARC readers in ad campaigns that I didn't know what I was doing with, all these little things that just chipped and chipped and chipped away at the money. Um, and I'm going to be honest, very few of us indie authors are going to make that a kind of money back on your first book. Even if you list your book at $1.99, you're looking at making 70 to 90 cents a book back in royalties. How much would you have to sell to make $4,000 back? It's a lot, a lot of books, especially for debut and especially working this yourself. Um, and that $4,000 just flew. My books since then, I have not put anywhere near that and I've gotten much better release numbers and sales. And the more I release, the easier it gets because now I have a backlog. I have a proven uh, record of quality based on the reader reviews for my prior books. So don't get discouraged and overwhelmed if you do all this work and then your first book doesn't go as well as you'd like, especially if it's a first in series. I was lucky that mine was a standalone, so they weren't taking no risk. There were no loose ends for them. If they picked it up and I decided I wasn't publishing anymore, they didn't get themselves invested in something they never saw the end of. <laughs> but they're taking a risk on you. They don't know who you are. So you have to think about it from the reader's perspective. Going through this launch process really helps with your starting. First, your pre-orders are going to go up. Where do pre-orders go up? Well, pre-orders go up both on Goodreads, which I shared earlier, um, once you have them listed on a retailer, a retailer is going to be Amazon draft to digital, which I have a video about where it can put it on tons of little online retailers all at the same time, Barnes and Noble press, Indiegogo, Smashwords, Kobo. You think about it, Google play books, Apple books, they can go anywhere. But once your pre-orders are up, then you want to go and put these books up on platforms where readers hang out to watch books. And I strongly recommend BookBub. BookBub is free for authors to use. It is free for readers to use, just like Goodreads, it's free. You can go in here and once your book is up on a retailer, you can add it to your library as an author and then it will add it down here. 
and readers can add it to their watch list. Here's the new cover of The Violet Twist of Fate, by the way. Um, and they can add it to their watch list. And once the book drops in price, the readers get notified for free. This book you added to your watch list is on sale. And it's like, yay, I can buy myself a sale book because I use this as a reader myself and I have no shame in adding to my sad TBR list over here, you guys. No shame. <laughs> um, but my readers could do the same thing. And that's great because I love connecting with readers. And with your debut book, every new reader who will actually invest in reading your book matters. So don't be stingy, you guys. That's the takeaway here. Don't be stingy. You've got plenty of time to price your other books much higher, but try to get people reading you. Try to get them to want to read more of your work. So once you have your pre-orders up, you've started talking about it on that social media or website or whatever route you went and sharing it with the other authors that you've networked with, talk about doing a cover reveal. The cover reveal can be as simple as a social media post that you ask all the authors that you're networked with if they'd be willing to share for one day on their page. And it's, look at this gorgeous cover. You guys have seen on my YouTube channel, if you follow me very long, that I have covers that I think are beautiful like this one. I bought Chris Gurley's The Lost Air because of this cover right here. Um, the paperback version, even though Chris had been kind enough to send a free ebook version through Reezy Discovery for me as a reviewer, I bought this the second I saw the cover. I was like, I want this. I have to have it. I haven't even read it. Um, a cover goes a long way. So having a established author talk about your cover goes a long way and be prepared and willing to do the same. This is a community, a rising tide is gonna lift all the boats. The more you're willing to reach out and help others, the more you will see people encouraging and lifting you up as well. Start interviews and party appearances. There's lots of guides about how to approach interviewers. I actually have a whole panel talking about where to connect with reviewers for your book, where to approach um, interviewers Go take a look at that. Um, there's also videos where you can find booktubers and ch check out the ones who are interviewing indie authors like Bald and Balding. Um, there's also uh, Beard of Darkness. I listed a video of five of them on my YouTube channel just this past week. Um, and people like me too. I can't do as many interviews as I would like. I know way more authors than I have time in the day. But I have a whole playlist here of indie authors that I've interviewed. And here is the five booktubers you should follow in 2024. Some of them are as well. Connect with one, follow them, read their comments, read the work that they like, make sure it's a good fit first, then offer to come on and chat with them live and see what they say and graciously say no if they don't seem like they are interested. Then you're going to get ready for your launch week promo. This is where it all comes to a head. By the time launch week comes out, book two should be done. Your cover is revealed already. Your pre-orders have been up. Your file is uploaded in your retailer. You're all ready to go. And now you've got to promote it for launch week. This is where having a little bit of help never, ever hurts. But make sure that you vet someone before you pay them to help you. Um, I personally used Fiction Atlas. Uh, Courtney L. Cannon, who's a USA Today bestselling author herself. Courtney has a passion for this industry, for us as authors, for good books. She doesn't work with every genre and every author. So just because I'm mentioning her doesn't mean she necessarily is going to be the best fit for you. But I hired Courtney to help me keep myself sane and do a strong launch and coordinate book tours of people who would talk about my book and all of that for my Lord's Gambit series when Oracle of Life came out. And she was very, very modestly priced. She does organization for Facebook parties and events and all kinds of things. Um, she has services that start at just $25 for blitzes and things like that. So you can check out the link in my description box for her, but she's not the only one. So if your genre is not fantasy 
and you need somebody to help you with your mystery or something, there are services out there, but don't go pay someone thousands and thousands of dollars on empty promises. Make sure that you have checked your sources, that they have a proven return on investment. As much as I love Courtney, I did go chat with other authors who had used her service before I booked her for mine and asked if she'd take mine. And they had nothing but praise to say for her. And then I used her myself and I have nothing but praise to say for her. So that's what you want is to make sure that the services you're hiring, especially if you don't already know someone like I already knew Courtney, if you don't already know someone that you vet them and you vet them really well. All right, then it's launch day, which means it's time for the launch party. Launch parties are stressful. If you do a strong launch, you may end up doing multiple of them, but that is not an expectation. And something to keep in mind for all of this stuff is you don't have to do all these things to be successful in a launch. Doing all of these things combined can give you a strong opening launch, but some hold more weight than others. If you did the cover reveal, you have a strong platform, you have strong pre-orders, you've had interviews, you've done the parties, and launch day, you just want to let the dominoes fall, that's okay. You're allowed to sit back and enjoy your launch. Um, I was on an interview panel for Caden Love last week on a different YouTube channel, uh, congratulating Caden on his debut novel. So congrats, Caden. Uh, but on that launch one of the things i loved was caden had worked himself so hard and decided to go the kickstarter route to launch his book which is a whole other level because now you have merch design and stuff thrown in on top of all the things you've just heard about today and um on launch day caden was replying to comments to the messages to the congratulations going to interviews setting up new interviews shipping out ebooks to his backers and not necessarily hopping around to every other single party all day um i don't know what all caden did and i don't want to presume that he didn't do any at all but caden worked himself really 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 hard you can push yourself to do everything or you can find a slightly lighter load and both ways are okay you want a really good strong launch first day but you also want to maintain the mental and emotional energy to keep going because every single author I have ever met in this community that I've asked has told me they got a slump the day after they felt drained. They were exhausted. It felt like they just run a marathon and you wake up with the realization that you need to do this again and again and again. And the race you've been running for the last 18 months to release this book for a lot of us, or 12 months for a lot of us is just starting all over for the next book. So the only way to keep going long-term and be balanced about it is to give yourself the grace to know when you're too tired, to give yourself healthy boundaries. If you have the energy and you have the excitement and you have the drive and you don't feel like you're stretching yourself, then go for it. But if you're starting to feel tired, it's okay. And nobody's gonna expect more than what you want to give, especially on your debut. And as I mentioned earlier, the last point today is have your next book prepped. This is going to be vital. If I drive anything home from all my experiences, from all my mistakes, go back and watch my channel, especially the green screen ones, the raw and real uh, updates, those moments of pain that I had to grow through in my writing journey to get to the USA Today bestseller list to get to be here to talk to you guys came from not being prepared for the stage of the journey I was in. And most of the time that was because I didn't have a book published ready when I should have. When you launch a book, you launch your debut. Yay, see my debut, it's beautiful. I love it so much. It's the best thing ever. The first thing people do on your interview this happened to Kate on that interview I was just talking about. When's the next book coming out? Tell us about your next book, Kate. Tell us about your next book, Catherine. After The Violet Twisted Fate came out, I didn't have a next book. It was a standalone. And I realized, oh no, 
I've got all these readers. I spent all this time and I did want to publish more. I had more that I plan to publish, but not in the next few months, not in the next year. The next full length novel I had planned to put out was in October of 2022 and Val came out in July of 2021. So then I was pulling out novellas that I had written and I was revising them and releasing them to fill the gap. But a reader does not treat a novella the same way they treat a full length novel. And that is a lesson I wish I had learned. I released five novellas over the time between July 2021 and October 2022, but they didn't keep my momentum going as a writer and a person selling books as it did once I started Lord's Gambit and I started putting up a book at least every three to four months. Then it started to improve and I'm getting a more regular cadence. And I made a mistake again last year. My file was corrupted for book two of the Lord's Gambit series, or book three, rather. Book one came out, book two came out, book three was supposed to come out in March. So we had January release, February release, March, book was gone. I had to rewrite the whole thing. And um, I ended up releasing Slayer Queen in the summer. I ended up releasing Slayer Queen's Warlock in the fall. Uh, and those are both full-length books. And now I'm working on the very last revisions of book three that I had to rewrite so that I can put it out this spring and keep that cycle going. So have book two ready and preferably have a pre-order ready or be willing to tell people on launch day when the pre-order is going up. So two weeks from now, the pre-orders will open for book two. Anyway, so people have a reason to continue coming back, to continue reading, to give you their trust and um, invest in the stories that you have built. So this is a very short summary of all the little details. I know you guys heard me mention things um, that didn't explicitly get a slide or a whole lot of time. Drop in the comments for me which aspects of this journey you want to know more about, and I will make videos for you guys based on those topics. Nothing is off limits on this channel except for my private bank account information, all that. I'm sorry, you guys, you're not getting any of my confidential information on here. But as far as the book process goes and writing and publishing and editing and marketing, I am an open book. I started this channel to help others see the real, raw, live truth of self-publishing and not just here, give me your money and I'll make you a success. I cannot promise that if you follow these steps, your book will be a success because there's so much more than that. It comes down to which audience you found. Did you find the right one? Which cover did you pick? Does it match the others in your genre? Does it look like it fits there? Which retailer did you choose it on? Which month did you release your book in? There's good and bad months for each genre to release your book in. There's so much there that I can't guarantee that if you follow every step in this video, you're going to be, you know, a USA Today bestselling author. But this will give you a foundation and on this, you know what to go research. You know to go research when's the best time to put out a book. You know to go research book covers for your genre. You know to go research editing for your genre. So ask away. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. It means the world to me. And check out the links to these tools in the description box. And check out my indie author behind the scenes playlist. I hope to be reading your books in the near future. Bye, everybody.